All right, so objective of today's video is to install a factory mounted hitch onto the back of this 2017 Dodge Durango. I'll leave the part numbers below. But there's the hitch, there's the accessories that come with it, some of the tools needed. Uh, there's my brake controller from my last uh, vehicle instructions and uh, the cable, the harness cable for the Takanasha brake controller. Videos out there that show you how to do this, um, but I want to do one that's a little bit more detailed. So even though you don't have to do this, the first thing we're going to do is lower the spare tire using the tools provided in the back here. So you set it up like this. And then just turn it. And it slowly lowers the spare tire. Which you can see is coming down here. Um, if you have a Dodge Durango RT, from what I understand, most of the ones that come out of the factory now, even if they don't have the tow package, um, do have the full size spare tire uh, which is an indication that you are good to go the other thing is we'll see in a minute uh, is that they also come pre-wired with the harness to the back of the um, the, the uh, back of the truck um, they also come with the um, what is it engine cooling the uh, high capacity engine cooling as well as the auto leveling rear suspension so we're good to go um, putting on the factory uh, hitch will uh, essentially get us to 7,200 pounds towing capacity. So once you've lowered it down, uh, I'll do it in a second, but you just basically need to have a bit more slack here. This will twist on its side and lift up. So as with most things, that was a pain in the ass. Um, I know from other trucks I've had, I'm used to it just showing uh, this, uh, which you can basically pop up. Obviously out of the factory it has a plastic cover which I finally managed to smash and take off. Just as while I'm doing that now, not at the side of the road when I have a flat tire. But anyway, that's, uh, that's how you take the spare out. Okay, so now that we've taken the spare out, this is the cable that goes up to it. You'll see that tucked in behind the spare um, is, the, uh, is the wiring harness. So this is important and it's an important telltale sign um, that your vehicle is essentially good to go for a um, tow package um, really all you're doing is putting on you're actually replacing this bumper here and this is where your hitch, is, uh, hitch receiver is going to go so you probably don't have to do this but uh, we're going to remove the rear cover there's a couple of uh, little plastic screws that you just unbolt and then this guy comes off and then that's what we're dealing with. This is the replacement cover that you get, um, which has a bulge in it, obviously to accommodate the hitch. And it just goes in like that once the hitch is on. And uh, you can get this sprayed or leave it the same color. I'll probably take it to a shop and get it sprayed. In case you need it, this is the part number for the hitch cover. But uh, if you do the Mopar, um, hitch kit, which I did. Uh, this is actually included as part of that package. And one thing that's really important is you get the, uh, the bolts as well as some replacement uh, plastic rivets. At the back here, first of all, is undo this screw, cut these two plastic rivets out, and then also deal with this bolt here as well. Top bolt is a 10 mil bottom bolt is an 8mm. So next step is to remove the rivets here. You can use a rivet machine uh, or a rivet removing tool. Um, I'm actually just using a knife here, I'm trying to do it one handed. It is actually fairly straightforward, I just didn't want to do it while uh, taking a video. Anyway, this should start to pull off 
No. Because what you need to do is get access to, uh, to these bolts here, I believe. This is what your plastic rivets will look like once they're uh, cut off, and you can, uh, you can just throw those out. So in case it's not already obvious, I'm not a mechanic. So we need to deal with this type of screw. I don't know what its official term is, but uh, if I can find the right size, I'll take that out. Uh, and then there's also one other bolt up here which needs to come out under the bumper. I think this is a 10 mil. Uh, there's one there. This is the wiring harness that uh, was just clipped in. Uh, there's another one there that we need to do. Uh, that's just keeping the bottom of the bumper. So we'll undo those. So next out uh, is this guy right here. Again, not a YouTube mechanic. Uh, sorry, I'm a YouTube mechanic, not a proper mechanic, but uh, this guy just should unscrew. And then it's the same on the other side. Yeah. Actually pulling uh, the clips out and you'll see I already broke one um, and taking the bumper off. Uh, there's another guy that does a video on this which I'll link below which kind of explains how to do it because it's going to be hard for me to hold the camera and do this at the same time but uh, just go careful with this. Another piece of advice uh, is to actually have something underneath the bumper when you pull it off uh, because as I did uh, because as I did, uh, as soon as the clips came out, uh, it uh, fell. So the last thing we need to do is just disconnect this guy here, which is the rear sensors, so that we can take the bumper fully off. Okay, so rear bumper off. Next thing is to remove this, this guy here. I believe there's four bolts underneath, and this should just slide out. And uh, there's the bumper underneath this bolt and this bolt and then as I understand it correctly when we put the new hitch in uh, there'll be a third bolt that will go in there but we've got to get these guys out on either side that's a 21 mil bolt by the way or socket I should say wrench whatever and uh, didn't realize this but there's another bolt, uh, one here and one on the other side that also need to come out before you can slide this guy out. It's out, and then this guy should, okay, slip out. It's a good pull, but uh, as you can see, that slips out, chuck this away. You might want to consider is just cleaning your uh, muffler tips uh, while well, you've got all this off, but I've just slid in the uh, Mopar factory hitch now. You can see this is where the uh, receptor for uh, plugging in either a 7 or a 4 pin will go. Uh, this is your 2 inch receiver and then your uh, pieces for your chains as well. Uh, this is the uh, particular part number four, uh, just the, the hitch piece, it's the receiver itself. Now we're back under. You can see we're going to need one. This is two, three, and then the fourth goes under there. Um, and so we'll get those guys in and then do the same on the other side. The thing you want to do before you feed the factory installed wiring harness through here is you want to just um, take off this cap here that's just a dust cap. Just stick a screwdriver in there just to prise up that little clip and then it just comes off. And then you'll see that the uh, uh, plug there is, uh, or the socket, whatever you want to call it, is nice and clean. So now we just need to uh, plug that through here and into, uh, into there. Should be straightforward. Your um, seven pin and your four pin just slides in clips in and I'll just check it on the back to make sure it's all plugged in but we should uh, should be good to go. Um, unfortunately there is one step that you need to uh, 
go to your local dealership to uh, to have you do, and that is to actually activate um, the wiring harness. Um, that isn't something you can do. I just checked with my local dealership yesterday, and um, they said that it would be fifty-four dollars Canadian uh, to do that. So uh, that is one last piece that needs to be done in order to activate the harness, uh, because right now it's still not going to work. So now that we have the trailer receiver hitch um, on, uh, next thing to do is to just going to be to reinstall uh, the bumper. This is what it looks like underneath. Uh, I checked to make sure that the harness is securely uh, into the receiver there, which it is. Um, just one thing to make sure, these, these fold. Uh, when I put the bumper back on, it actually was stuck up in here, so just make sure you pull them back so that you can then screw them in. So now this is the back of the truck with the pregnated uh, cover, which needs to be sprayed. But uh, all done. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is install the wiring harness for my Tekanosha uh, brake controller, which is right here. Came from the uh, last truck I owned. Uh, straightforward, plugs in at the back there. And then this adapter here will plug in under here. It's a little hard to see, but it is right there is where the adapter goes in. So you just got to pull back this trim and we'll plug it in. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, get in up there, but uh, anyway, it's in. So next thing to do is to uh, just decide where this guy is going to go, which will probably be something like that. Screw that in, uh, fix the harness in and we're good to go. So just made a mark with a screwdriver and then I'll drill a pilot hole uh, and then we'll screw it in. Okay, so it's screwed in now. Didn't need to use a pilot hole. Self-tapping screws. Just got to make sure. this through and then plug it in to the back here you should see now I've got power to it I'll just tidy up the cables here and then uh, good to go so as I understand it um, all the uh, Dodge Durango RTs with the 5.7 Hemi are equipped um, out of the factory, even if they don't have the factory tow package um, installed with them. Um, they're basically good to go other than the receiver. And so one thing to do if you are looking at a Dodge Durango RT uh, is to ask a dealership uh, to basically get you one of these documents. Um, can't remember exactly what it's called, um, but they'll need the VIN number of the vehicle, and it will tell you exactly out of the factory which um, options the vehicle comes with. So you'll see, for example, here we've got trailer sway dampening, um, we've got the full size spare tire, uh, you'll see here that we've got the heavy duty engine cooling, the rear load leveling suspension, um, and I think. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so with that, uh, basically that'll give you information about uh, the vehicle. Um, and then you know for sure that you're basically good to go with um, installing uh, the Mopar hitch. Um, and then once you install the Mopar hitch, uh, you'll basically be able to tow, uh, your vehicle will be at a 7,200 pound towing capacity. Um, you know, even though the information that you'll find online from the manufacturers will tell you that uh, without the factory installed towing um, package, you can only tow 3,500 pounds, but that's, uh, that's not true. Um, because like I say, we've got the rear load leveling suspension, the heavy duty engine cooling, the full size spare tire, uh, which I'm assuming has to do with, you know, if you get a flat uh, while you're towing, you, you obviously don't want to be using a, um, one of those compact spares. Um, and then of course the uh, trailer sway dampening 
Um, so it's a bit of a scam uh, when you buy one of these new because if you look online with Dodge, uh, essentially they'll charge you um, extra to add on the tow package. Uh, when really the only thing that, that isn't with the vehicle out of the factory is the uh, the hitch receiver itself. So I hope that makes sense, but um, did a lot of research before I um, went down this path and obviously before I bought my vehicle to make sure that I, uh, I could tow safely.